All right, time to dial in Triotech. The number you have reached is not in service. All right, now if everything is successful, we should have uh, Christian Martin on the phone with us. Christian, are you there? I am, absolutely. How are you? Good, good. This is uh, the VP of Marketing for Triotech, the uh, company in charge of uh, the Wonder Mountains Guardian up at Canada's Wonderland, correct? Absolutely. Yeah, that's us. Now, now, where are you guys located? We're in Montreal, and um, we have a studio here where we, we develop all the, you know, all the rides and all the, the movie content. Um, and we also have a factory uh, set up in the suburbs to uh, manufacture, you know, the hardware. But, uh, you know, all the cool stuff is in the city. <laughs> Are you in the city? I knew it was something because we've done so many phone interviews, but this was the only one where they played the message in English and then played in French when we called you up. So, <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. It's a, it's a little free lesson. <laughs> Did you learn anything, Legend? Uh, no. No, no. <laughs> Just out of curiosity, when you were in high school, what uh, what uh, what uh, language did you take? Espanol. Yeah, that's what I took, and I still know nothing. I know how to go to the bath. I can say uh, baño, and that's it. So, yeah, I, I know a little bit. I could have a very terrible conversation and not get most of it. Because once you start speaking something like Spanish, when you don't really know it, the person thinks you know everything, and they ta start talking really fast, and then you have <laughs> no idea what's going on. So, and, and we go on a lot of cruises, which happen to be to Mexico, Oh, and yeah. uh, and they don't, nobody ever speaks Spanish when you're in Mexico. They all just speak English, so mm -hmm. that's crazy. Uh, anyways, back to the interview. Um, <laughs> so now uh, th let's talk a little bit about what you guys do before we get into uh, Wonder Mountain Guardian. Uh, you guys do a lot of other stuff, and this is your first kind of big project into the uh, 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 dark rides, correct? Exactly. We we started originally 15 years ago. It's actually our anniversary this year. Uh, doing more uh, coin up machines, and then we grew and and uh, you know as the company was growing, we're, we kept making bigger and bigger uh, products. So you know we we did the XD Theater, which is an immersive experience. You're sitting on your seat. It's moving you know 400 movement per second and two Gs of force, and you get your 3D glasses and you win and. And then we got into an interactive version of that. So it's all the same, plus you got your laser blaster and you're, you know, taking care of the bad guys. And that's what we've been doing. And and now we're into the interactive dark rides. You're right, the Canada's Wonderland, you know, it's going to be a huge project for us. But we've got a couple more. We've got Hello Kitty in, uh, in Shanghai, just outside of Shanghai, that's going on at the same time. Wow, uh, how big is Ooh, the? Hello actually, Kitty? I want to hear more about. That. <laughs> Can you talk anything about that? Because that's the first I've heard of this. Is is that an interactive dark ride as well, or just a, a motion yes, ride? Exactly. Uh, yes, it's it's. Uh, you know, as we say, it's the same ex except it's completely different. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm, su I'm sure you've heard this expression a lot in in our world. But uh, yeah, it is an interactive dark ride. But it will be a different cart, a different experience, obviously a different content. So there's a lot of differences. You know, same product family, completely different experience. I was going to say, because that, that has to be super family friendly, because most of these things, you know, you're, you're shooting zombies or you're, you're battling pirates. But I, w what's going to go on in this Hello Kitty ride? Well, actually, we've got our uh, good friend um, uh, Bats Maru, who's uh, he's not a bad guy because there's no bad guys in Hello Kitty, but you know he's a, he's a little bit of a how can I say the black sheep of the family sometimes. So he's the he's the penguin with the spiky hair, and he's he's going to be the main the main guy in, in the ride. Um, so. It's it's gonna be uh it's something we developed here so you know we develop you know completely um, completely original content uh, but we also develop content you know with uh, brands and, and intellectual properties of, of of our clients when they ask for it so we you know with the studio here we get about 35 uh, you know 3D artists movie directors creative directors we can uh, we can do a lot in terms of uh, of creating content and animated movies and 3D movies. No. Very cool. And and where's that going in Shanghai? Uh, it's going into the Hello Kitty Park. Um, that makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> so it's a fully themed uh, park, and uh, you know it's uh, it's a greenfield project. They're building that from scratch. It's been uh, they've been working on it for 
quite some time now, so that's going to be uh, this summer, later, a little bit later this summer. But for us here, you know, uh, we're working on these two projects in parallel. Now, how far along are you with the Hello Kitty project? Uh, we're pretty far, pretty far along, uh, but it's. I, I do believe, uh, I do believe it will open open after Canada's Wonderland. Just a question of, uh, you know, they're over there. They're building a park, and at Canada's Wonderland, obviously, they're building a ride in the park. So, it's uh, although it's a huge project, it's it's not the same as building a brand new uh, facility. Now, uh, you were talking about you guys have your own uh, uh, animators and uh, 3D artists uh, right there in-house. How many films do you guys create a year? Well, it depends. Uh, it depends on a couple of factors. And, and we, you know, we'll do four, let's say around four, but it really it, it can vary a lot because we can have you know, customers saying, I want a movie with my ride, or a customer can say, you know, with this attraction, I'm going to... Uh, you know, I'm going to start with uh, with some content that you already have in your library. And but uh, in in terms of, of capacity, you know, you can go and and get some people and and add some extra resources to the team. And Montreal is kind of a a world capital of uh, video games. Uh, a lot of the big companies, uh, Electronic Arts, Ubisoft, uh, you know, Warner Brothers, they're all have studios here. So there, there's a lot of schools. There's a lot of talent here when it comes to uh, to uh, animation, video games, 3D uh, animation, so it's a good place to be, and it's one of the reasons we have the studio here, of course. Wow, that is crazy. I did not know uh, that that Montreal was such a hub for video game uh, making. <laughs> yeah, it absolutely is. Assassin's Creed might have heard of it. Um, who hasn't really? That's all made here, and you know a bunch oh, wow. of other big of the big names. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, let's talk. Uh, let's talk Canada's Wonderland. Uh, obviously, you guys are working on that uh, Wonder Mountain Guardians project. Uh, and uh, w- I mean, here in Virginia, it's sunny and seventy, so we need. We're, we must be getting closer to uh, parks getting ready to open. Uh, uh, just a couple months away. Uh, wh- where are you guys with that project now? We're we're we're, uh, we're certainly closer for sure, but it's it's not it's not the same weather as Virginia. And <laughs> it's still a bit colder. Um, uh, it's about forty degrees, uh, you know, over the last few uh, few days. So it's 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 uh, it's uh, tough work for the crews out there. But yeah, they are doing the work right now, and you know, we got Triotech people out there. Uh, working under under the mountain, and you've got obviously a lot of Canada's Wonderland people also uh, working there. I think we placed some pictures on our Facebook page. Uh, you might want to go check that out. But uh, you know, it's it's coming along. It's uh, you know, it, it needs to be ready for the season, and it will be ready for the season. So it's it's quite exciting here. And it's a big project too. I believe I saw a tweet from Canada's Wonderland where they had a, a forty seven people working on the project one day from ten different companies. Yes. Or something absolutely. like that. So Yes. Now, how hard is it working with everyone, uh, you know, coming from all these different, you know, ten different companies that's a lot of different people to bring together on one project? It's actually uh it's actually been going very smoothly. I, I think there's a couple of reasons for that. One is the people at Canada's Wonderland uh, Norm over there and his team, they, they have, you know, you're talking about, uh, you know, senior guys that have 30, 35 years experience in the industry. It's not their first project, you know. So, no. yes, there's a lot of moving parts. It's, it's quite complex. You got to coordinate a lot, but, you know, they're, we're working with top professionals, you know, uh, the Cedar Fair guys and, and the Canada's Wonderland guys. So they really know what they're doing. So everything's well integrated. Everything's kind of coming at the right time. So that's, that's been a lot easier. We do projects all around the world, and obviously, uh, the further you go from your home culture, whether you know it's it's North American or you know you you start going into other continents, sometimes there's challenges just in language. You know, we were joking about Spanish and and, and French and English earlier, <laughs> but you know that's the reality of doing a project in China, if you will, you know, or Malaysia. You know, we're, so we're doing all over the world. So sometimes we allow a little bit more time if we know that there's going to be child time or sort of cultural differences time, you know, and, and kind of stuff like that. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm perusing your Facebook looking at pictures now. <laughs> Yeah, we're kind of a, uh, you know, kind of a, uh, I don't know, 
uh, cool company. We like to think of ourselves as, and uh, obviously our Facebook is kind of a little of a, of a window inside our soul. So you know, you'll see our our uh, you know Friday morning breakfast as well as you know some of the projects we work on. You know, it's it's uh, we're not IBM. You know, it's not the corporate world either. So I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> Thank you. We got guys working in shorts, uh, obviously in the summer. But uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a fun place, and you have to be. be it has to be because you know we're we're a bunch of creative uh, people creating rides and movies and 3D animations, and you know, uh, not too many ties around here, so you can see from the from the Facebook. All right. Uh, let's I'm, actually, I'm doing the same thing, Clint. I'm going to go on the <laughs> page right now. We, we both <laughs> ran out of questions because now we're now we're looking at you guys playing foosball and uh, all sorts of stuff on your yeah, Facebook exactly. page. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if you saw that that table is steamed with our company, and on, uh, you can't see the the surface of play. But we we took all our villains from our movies and all our good guys, <laughs> so we made the good guys against the bad guys. You know, and uh, it's kind of, it's kind of funny little things we do. Uh, you know, kind of a weekend projects. You know. That is very that cool. Is I like that. Oh, and, right. You know, no. When we're on TV or when we talk to you guys, uh, you you know, uh, you know, we kind of put a link there. Uh, I think the interview you did at Yapa with us is, you know, if you scroll down to November, it's probably in there somewhere. Oh, now now you now you have me scroll into November. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I have to not do some fact checking. You have the legend on camera, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh wait, wait a minute. Well, first of all, they uh, not only uh, – first of all, you can go to our YouTube page, YouTube backslash Coaster Crew, and see the interview yeah. that we did with uh, Triotech on there, which is really cool because we were actually in the ride vehicle and, and getting uh, our first look at uh, the kind of technology that's going to be used. But you guys also linked our uh, our Matt Weeman interview. So <laughs> Yeah, we, we did. Know? I mean, uh, listen, I'm not saying that because you're on the phone, but, uh, you know, it's it's fun to have resources like, like you sort of connecting – all this world of, of you know of amusement parks uh, you know so it's uh, we actually kind of go go to your site and and uh, look at your stuff and uh, use your YouTube channel to see what's going on and uh, you know kind of feed uh, feed on the industry you know so it's it's uh, it's a cool thing that you guys are doing now if I remember correctly uh, this was also one of the only booths who knew who knew who we were going up to them for the first time. They're like, oh, that's the Coaster Crew. They do the YouTube stuff. We watch your stuff. We listen to your podcast. That, that kind of scared us a little bit. But. <laughs> it did. Because yeah, normally we get yeah, people yeah. that come back like the second year and like, hey, do another video for us. The first year, whenever we first talk to somebody and they know who we are, it's like mind-blowing experience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's very cool. Well, you know, it's you're a victim of your success now. <laughs> All right. Uh, Legend, any other questions? Well, um, going back to Wonder Mountains Guardian, it's uh, you know, it, it's not like a roller coaster where you you you'd make the announcement and you see absolutely everything, and you know what's going on. Uh, what do you think is going to be the number one thing people leave the ride saying? Coming out, you mean? Yeah, yeah. I I, I think yeah, you're right. You're you're starting. You're outside, but pretty quickly you go under the mountain, and so people will have no clue until they hit the pre-show. You know. What what am I doing here? And uh, you know, this is interactive. What does it mean? You know, am I fighting somebody? Yes, yes, you are. Uh, do I have a mission? Yes, you do. You know, but I'll let our friends at Canada's Wonderland sort of give out the details on that. But you know, coming out because one of the technology that we thrive on is, is sort of our game engine. We we took technology from the video game industry and we brought it. To the amusement ride industry, and that's what Triotex. That's where we put our name, you know. And so the, the the game engine, the interactivity. There's no there's no loss of fun and play, depending on how many people are doing the ride at the same time. Or uh, there's there's a minimum uh, pre-rendering, so it's it's really a live game engine. So when people come out, they're gonna say, "Wow." That was great. That's good. But they're also going to say, "Man, the legend beat me. I want, I want to go back because you're going to have scoring. You're going to have scoring for uh -huh. you, for the people in your cart with you, 
and you know that's a feature that's incredibly popular. We have this feature in our in our dark raid. Um, uh, you know our theater product with with the seats that move, uh, and we're going to have it obviously in the interactive dark ride where you're going to go in your cart, just like uh, in this project here. And and we believe, and and I think Canada's Wonderland believes also that you know this is going to create really a lot of momentum that people are you're going to be competing and and you know it's it's a back to back cart, so you're going to see different things. You know if you're sitting on one side or the other, so people are going to say, okay, I want I want to do it again. And I want to beat my score, and I want more important. I want to beat your score. The only thing uh, that you had incorrect there was the legend's not going to be beating <laughs> anyone. It's going to be uh, me beating everyone. Uh, so, <laughs> I I meant that if you're using your left hand to shoot, <laughs> you know, let's sort of give yourself a handicap, then he might beat you. I guess that's <laughs> that's what I was thinking. But you know. I, We'll have to go together, and then I can witness the big duel. <laughs> we'll make a we'll make it a whole Facebook or a, a YouTube spectacle. <laughs> I, think, I think you should. <laughs> well, I already won. I already won the YouTube spectacle. We had to travel quite a ways to get there. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you Florida, go. Virginia, Montreal, all coming together yeah. at yeah, uh, Canada's exactly. Wonderland. Absolutely. My money's on Christian. Well, he has the unfair advantage. He, you know, works there and and gets to play, you know, all well, the stuff. He gets think, to practice I foosball. Think, yeah. and <laughs> to be fair, I think it would have to be a Clint versus the legend head to head. I've I've seen the content, so you know, <laughs> you're just you know, you're just you're just the referee. The little extra <laughs> bonus are, and you know that's I, you know I think we ought to be fair, and you should go head to head. Well, I this is one of those uh, those those dark rides that when we had a chance to get in there and and play and demo it, it, it really shocked us as to how how far along uh, this has come. And it's it's one of those things where you know I, I don't get up to Canada's Wonderland as much as I would like, but uh, I really hope that Cedar Fair jumps on the bandwagon and adds more of these uh, at some of their parks, so you know uh, we can start playing these a little closer to home as well. Well, I think uh, you're close to uh, Dominion, uh, King's Dominion, maybe? Yeah, yep. very, like that. very close to King's Dominion. Yeah, there you go. So, you know, maybe one day the technology will be there. I don't know. I will, I, I'll go down there right now and, to, and start protesting. I'll, I'll, get a, <laughs> I'll get a little, uh, I'll do one of those online petitions. King's Dominion one to get rid of singing know, mushrooms to, uh, in that dark uh, ride. Star, so maybe you can do one related to uh, an amusement <laughs> ride that you want. So. Yeah. Well, you know, King's Dominion also has a large mountain that's partially empty. Yeah. There, see? see there. Yeah, we're just like just like Canada's Wonderland. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Live strategic planning. Yeah, except it, <laughs> it is 70 degrees here and 40 degrees there. So it's much warmer to build a ride here. There you go. Season's much longer, too, right? Yes, yes, yeah. I mean, it's probably not much longer because you got Canada's Wonderland does the haunt events and stuff too, and I can't. I think they probably only open a few weeks after we do. Yeah. Um, we open uh, very early April. I'm guessing they open in May. But uh, yeah, yeah correct. May fourth this year will be uh, the opening day, and uh, yeah, and then they go weekends in the late fall for uh, you know for Halloween and all those special events. So. Now I just Which wanted to go back. Be another great, uh, great side of this is that you know because it's media based, uh, you can you can have special events. You can have something maybe a Halloween season. There will be something special there, you know. Um, so you don't have to change all your theming and physical uh, animatronics. You're you're projecting on on screens, so it's easier for the operator for the park to say, hey, I want to do something for one month, let's say. Yeah, or and, and not only that, but you could, uh, let's say you have a certain storyline, and then like two, three years down the line, they want to uh, change that storyline. You could even do like a, a sequel to that storyline or do something, you know, along the same same uh, film a concept. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And that's why, you know, I... I you know that's why we're working on on a few different projects at the same time because uh, now you're talking you know absolutely uh, you know interesting language for for parks you know because they're investing millions of dollars so you know they, they need to to uh, to be careful and if they can have a uh, more affordable you know sort of next generation of the ride or they can change it 
faster, you know, without shutting down for a long period of time, then it's uh, it's good for them and it's good for the guests. You know? All right. So, uh, what do we have in the future? Do you guys have any ideas or concepts that you guys are floating around that you uh, want to break into? Uh, not, not really. We we have a lot. Uh, you know, we've got we've got feverish minds here. You know, uh, kind of always saying, "What is this?" and "What is that?" and and uh, so we we've got a few projects, not only with with clients, but also technology wise. So, but you know, I can't really sort of unveil anything right now. Hopefully, <laughs> at Yapa, you know, we'll be uh, we'll be showing some stuff just like we did last year and when you guys visited. And I mean, if if you look at their products too, each one kind of evolves. They go from you know the Typhoon and the XD theater to the the 4D theater to the the 4D interactive dark ride. It keeps you know the technology evolves, and they and each version is better than the last. That's that's exactly it. I mean, you can uh, thanks you, you can really see you know you, it, it's easy to see the progression that how we went from you know to, to immersive first, and then to 3D, and then you know motion simulators, and then 3D, uh, but always adding you know um, sort of elements to the to the user experience because that's what's king. I mean, uh, you know, really we 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 strive to bring the bre- the best user experience. And that drives for our, you know, our uh, customers, which are the parks. You know, sort of the, the their criteria is when they invest. You know, they want a payback. You know, they, don't, they want they want this investment to be a good investment that's going to satisfy their guests and and bring people in the door. And but the key to that, you can't go straight to that. You got to say, well, I will deliver the best user experience, and then the rest will come. You know, because uh, you know, you come out of a ride, you want people to say. I want to do this right again. Absolutely. That's the now, bottom line. Yeah. Now, one thing you guys sell that is absolutely everywhere is the, the Typhoon little mini simulator in a lot of arcades. I know in the past month, I've seen it at Dave & Buster's, on a cruise ship, and then at Disney Quest. Like, how many of those do you have all around the world? Oh, literally, uh, you know, it's it's a few thousands. Uh, I, I don't have the number. I, I, I'd have to dig that up, but... Yes, that's a very, very, very popular item, and it's always, you know, in the magazines, rated really. that's sort of, you know, the best ride, uh, and it's been around for for quite a while. Uh, but we keep we keep uh, adding content. I mean, that's the thing also with, with you know, in in what we bring is yeah, you have the physical, right? You have the hardware, but you know, we bring new movies all the time, so. Yeah, I have my Typhoon. I've had it. I'm a Dave and Buster's. I'm a manager of Dave and Buster's. I've had this Typhoon for four years or two years or whatever, six years, you know, whatever. But you know, I'm, I keep adding movies, and my my guests come in and say, "Oh yeah, this is a great machine." And then the other guy goes, "Yeah, but I've done all the rides." Oh, but no, look, they have five new uh, five new movies, five new titles. Oh, okay, let's give it a try. You know. Yeah, that's what they were uh, when I was at Disney Quest uh, a couple of weeks ago. They were flashing that, and then I went on there and I wrote a a pinball one and then a mouse adventure. Uh, yeah. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, cool. it's a great product, and uh, you know that's really the genesis of the company. That's where we started. Mm-hmm. Now, with all of your products, do you know how many different ride films you have out there? We have uh, approximately thirty something. You know. All right, now movies. now I'm going to put you on the spot. What's your favorite? <laughs> uh, in in uh, in you know, no, that is not interactive. It's Canyon Coaster. That's like that's a classic. Here, yep. You you start on a biplane and then you kind of get dropped into an abandoned mine and you know it's 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 very well done and in the interactive i, I have to say zombies um bar none you know scary fun uh interactive it's got all the elements you know you get kind of the thrill uh a little bit of, a, of an edge um great motion simulation uh great competition Every time you do it, you kind of discover something different, and uh, people get scared at the end. So it's, uh, it's you know, it's kind of a great movie, you know. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Well, uh, do you do you have any other questions? Uh? You know, I I think that's about it. Um, 
But I, I love hearing stuff about this because I've always been a big fan of the motion simulator rides and things like that. You know, it, it's it's always something that I try and do whenever I'm in a park, even if I've been on it before, because it is that change of pace. You know, a lot of times you go to a park and there'll be, you know, 10 roller coasters, but there'll be one motion simulator. And I've always made a point to try and do that because a lot of times, like you said, you guys have, you know, 35 different films and things like that where it's very it's a different experience a lot of places you go and I've always been a big fan of that so I, I love having uh, companies like you guys on the show oh I really appreciate the uh, the chance to talk to you guys it, uh, it's, it's been too long we we saw each other in November I guess so you know you know we're always here and uh, you know we uh, for us it's an honor to talk to you guys so uh, please don't be bashful anytime give us a call yeah well no, we, I, we, we're definitely looking forward to the, the Canada's Wonderland ride and uh we hope it's a great success for you because we want to see more of them, especially after we did. Because we love the mock-up at IAPA. We can't wait to see what the real deal looks like. Uh, thank you. It's going to be great. All right. That is uh, the Vice President of Marketing over at Triotech. Christian, thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. What uh, distinguishes this particular ride is that it's an old uh, ghost train that we have updated and, and turned into a, a modern uh, high-tech uh, uh, interactive ride now. What is special about the ride is the possibility of uh, collecting points during the ride and uh, this element of competing against your family and your friends is very popular among our guests. We have received only great feedback from our from our guests on the new uh, haunted house. It has, as mentioned before, become very popular among our guests. Also, it was really, really scary, but it's really nice. But yeah, it's really fun. Yeah, we should probably do it in front of the fifth day we were out there. We should probably do it really well. Yeah. Jeg kan egentlig godt lide det med, at man egentlig, hvis man ikke har prøvet det før, man så ikke ved, hvad der kommer. Og selvom man har prøvet det mange gange, så er man stadig bange for de ting, der kommer. Øh, det var mega skræmt, at vi skræmte midt i det tid, så altså... Det var rigtig, 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 rigtig hyggeligt. Jeg tror, det var rigtig, rigtig, rigtig hyggeligt. Jeg ryster mig helt. Jeg ryster mig What we have noticed is that the audience, the guests of Tivoli, have created a, a Facebook fan page all by themselves, not supported by us, but of course we enjoy that it's there, and that only shows how popular the ride is. Uh, we've been working now with Triotech for two years, and uh, what is really the strength of Triotech as a partner to us is two things. First of all, they stand by their words. If you're promised a deadline or something else by Triotech, they stand by it, they live up to it every time. And furthermore, uh, it's uh, a major advantage to us that, that we can reach them anytime, even though we are in different time zones. Mm -hmm.